Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy of Other Wave Options and welcome to this week's Trade Finder Live. For those of you that are new, welcome. Let me give you a quick rundown of uh, how this works. First of all, if you've seen any of the videos that we've done, you know that we have to go through and show you this uh, disclosure disclaimer. You've probably seen it elsewhere as well. Um, but a couple things that the powers that be want to make sure you're aware of is number one, we are not registered to give individual investment advice in the United States. And two, because we have a lot of international viewers, we have a lot of international subscribers, any pricing that we're talking about is assumed to be in US dollars, unless noted otherwise. So uh, other than those two things, if this is your first time seeing it, please take a screenshot of it, read it in detail in your leisure. It is important, so I don't wanna make light of it, but uh, you just get used to seeing it uh, after a while, which isn't a bad thing. So here's a rundown of how Trade Finder works. We'll start off with talking a bit about the market. You may have seen the uh, SPY update that I did over the weekend. Thought I would clarify Bitcoin a bit too, because that seemed to cause some confusion, which makes me wonder if people actually watch the video or just look at the headlines. Uh, so we'll go through that real quickly. And then uh, I'll do a review of uh, any case studies that we closed for the week. So you get an idea of how the alert service works for our subscribers at LA Wave Options. And we do have one to look at. Uh, then we'll go through and do a recap of uh, our previous case study considerations that we've identified in previous trade finders over the last few weeks, exactly like this. And we'll go through and see if we can find one tonight as well. And with whatever time's left, we'll open it up to a general Q&A. That usually involves, at least uh, historically, those of you uh, uh, that are watching, asking uh, for your favorite symbols, and we put it on our charts to see what our charts say um, about your favorite stock. So that's the rundown of how this works. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, move into this week's Trade Finder. Taking a look at the market itself. I talked about this in the SPY update. We had this doji on Friday. And if we look at volume, you can see that volume had been lower. So when you have a move to the upside like this, where you have pretty low intraday volume, you can see the bars are small and you're creeping up at just a bit more of an angle than that 45 degree angle that I like, which would be this right here. So you can see how the angle increased just a bit, uh, moving a bit more vertical. And so now we're coming down to correct that, uh, which is what you would expect uh, and we look at the 10-day moving average because we had gotten a little bit above it at Friday's close. And you can see we tapped the 10-day moving average on the low today, which makes tomorrow's trade pretty important. Do we hold that? Do we bounce up from here? Or is that just a one-day test? And we're about to move lower and come down and close that gap that exists there right around 400. Well, if you've been watching any of the videos that have done or attended any of these trade finders, you know that we've been looking at 420 for a very long time now, a number of months as that 161.8% FIB extension of the zigzag C wave. So if you haven't seen that before, go ahead and go and look at one of the uh, previous videos. You can see that go back a ways and you can see that we've been forecasting it for quite some time. Well, we got almost there on Friday. Now, often those FIB levels and you probably heard me say this before as well, actually get touched. In other words, the percentage line actually gets touched, but not always. So does that mean we still have a little bit more to go? Because we also have this zigzag within a zigzag. So we have this move right here. So this zigzag within the C wave, which actually goes up to about 425, 426. So a little bit higher than that 420 level, but also note that is the 161.8% extension. So because we had a 50% B wave correction, 100% is all that's expected. And so when you get uh, a move and you hit the expected target, the question becomes, are we gonna get an extended move? So it did what it's supposed to do, but is it gonna extend further? And that's where we look at our confirming indicators to help give us a guide. And the volume was certainly not what you want. So the lower volume, I'll take that off so that we can see the uh, DMI chart, but you can see the DMI look pretty strong. It curled down a bit uh, with the start to this week, but it still looks okay. 
Positive directional indicators coming down, that happens a lot, but the negative directional indicator going up actually I think is a bit more important than the positive directional indicator going down. So this doesn't appear just to be a buyer strike. Looks like that there's some shorts coming in as well. Uh, maybe testing the waters, they do that a lot. The shorts are, uh, shorts are smart and they come in and they, they do these little tests. They wanna see how much resistance uh, there is uh, when they uh, step in. So they usually wait until the sentiment is so bullish that they don't have a problem when they come in with their short positions. Because remember, when you short, you have unlimited risk, right? Because there's no limit to how high something can go. There is no SEC, FINRA, no rule limiting how high a stock or therefore the market can go. So when you're short, the risk is to the upside. And because it's unlimited, there's no stopping it. So you have unlimited risk. So shorts are very careful. Uh, calculated, uh, if you will. So sometimes they'll come in and they'll do these little test things just to see uh, what kind of resistance there is in the market. Now, is that going on now? I think it's too early to tell, um, but we did move back to at least close that gap with the 10 day moving average. So the overbought condition has been satisfied. We also are testing that 100% extension. Now that's also normal that when you go through a FIB level, you often test the previous FIB level before going to the next one. In other words, we kind of blew right through that 100% extension in the secondary zigzag pattern. So coming down to test the 100% extension before moving to 161.8, 100% normal as far as LA Wave Fibonacci trading. So, so far, nothing is too concerning as far as the market going to the downside. Here's something I thought you might like to see. I'm gonna actually put this in the next SPY video, but I thought I'd give you guys a preview because you're here devoting your time, which we very much appreciate. This is a chart that I found that is margin debt to nominal GDP. So basically this is how extended traders are getting, right? Buying stock on margin, um, options with margin requirements, et cetera. And if you look at that, uh, you'll probably see that there's some stuff there that's probably not super settling, uh, especially when you go back and look at where these recent peaks have been. So the concern is when it starts to go parabolic. It did in March of 2000. I was there. I was trading it. I traded the market to the upside and then traded it to the downside for two years. We basically had a down market from 2000 to 2002. So I started my uh, training career back in 1996, as many of you know. So I, uh, I've been around and I've seen that occur before. Obviously, same thing in 2007, we had the big run up, very similar with the real estate uh, bubble moving to the upside. Uh, you just couldn't believe how fast houses were gaining value. It almost seemed like your house went up, uh, your property went up every month. So again, a vertical move to the upside uh, in this uh, margin, uh, chart and then boom, back to the downside. And isn't it interesting that they both found support right about the same area, right? 2002, 2009, but look where we are now. We're every bit, if not more parabolic to the upside than we were back in March of 2000, July of 2007. So does that guarantee we're going to the downside? Not at all. We still have, I mean, every situation is different, right? And we still have a ton of liquidity behind us if we believe what the Federal Reserve says that they're gonna to continue to pump liquidity. Um, and I say that not, not really in jest, but really with uh, uh, some uh, uh, hint of uh, concern because sometimes the Federal Reserve says they're gonna do something and they actually are doing something different. So uh, as long as they're injecting liquidity, it would be tough to have a significant correction, but if secretly behind the scenes, they're starting to pull back, they're not as injecting as much liquidity as we think. Maybe they're under unwinding a little bit of it, uh, closing in their balance sheet a bit. Then um, we could see something significant happen to the downside. But I just thought that that was interesting enough to show you. So what's the bottom line? What's, what's the gist of this here of everything that I'm showing you? I think the trend's still to the upside. We're yeah, stone's throw from 420, so you have to be careful about that. Uh, we still have this secondary zigzag, although it's already hit its 100% and done what it's supposed to do, potential to go to 161.8 based on the DMI. But I think that it would be prudent to protect the downside. And if you're not doing that, 
uh, you're being a little cowboyish, I think, right now. Um, it's, you know, put some protection on because at any point in time, we could have a big downdraft. And the fact that uh, this negative directional indicator is moving up in a bit of a vertical nature, a little bit of a concern as well. So um, maybe we go a bit higher from here. You heard me say, if you listen to that SPY video that I thought going straight up to 420 would set up a good shorting opportunity. We pretty much did that again, just almost touching the line exactly. Uh, and then we, we moved down two days. So that this means nothing yet because we're still above the 10 day moving average, but it could change in a hurry, especially with that gap looming down there at 400. So even a move back down to 400 is not really a big deal, right? I mean, we could move down to 400. We could come down, test this 61.8% level and turn and move back to the upside and, and be totally fine. So that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you, the market, but I also thought that that uh, margin uh, to nominal GDP was an interesting chart uh, that uh, maybe uh, gets you to at least think hey, you know, I'm pretty long in my portfolio. Maybe I want to do some protection. So based on, and I'll do this in the next video, but it, it'll be a few days probably. So let's let's take a quick look at uh, that chart of Bitcoin. And what I wanted to share with you is we mentioned there that Bitcoin uh, had broken out of its triangle pattern, right? So we had this triangle here and Bitcoin broke out. And we also had the zigzag here that we talked about. And I mentioned that it's normal for Elliott wave triangles, corrective triangles, once they break out to retrace the breakout. And I mentioned that the issue is it's the same as with gaps. It's going to do it, but we don't know when, right? I mean, we know 94%, at least that was the, the data that was done, 94% of gaps get filled. So you hear me say it all the time and we actually have hard real data to show it, but we don't know when. It doesn't mean that it's gonna get filled within the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, it could take some time. Sometimes we have a gap and it's filled the very next day. And sometimes it takes a while. Same thing with the breakout of a triangle. That breakout move gets retraced, same thing. We don't know when. Sometimes the breakout can run. Sometimes you come down, test the breakout right away and move back. Perhaps that's what's going on right now. So the fact that Bitcoin came back and tested this breakout point doesn't mean that we are not going to turn and go back to the upside. Maybe we don't. Maybe that is a false breakout and Bitcoin is done and it heads to the downside. That can happen as well. All I'm saying is that the fact that we broke out and came back to the test the breakout point is 100% in line with Elliott Wave triangles. We have a lot of good ed educational information on our website, ewotrader.com. And there's a lot of stuff about triangles there. Uh, and we talk about things like this, the aspects of a triangle, how to know about how far it's gonna break out, the different types of triangles, these uh, different types of breakouts where you can run straight up. Sometimes you come down and test it. Sometimes it goes vertical. Then it goes a 45 degree angle. It's gonna retrace the breakout. Sometimes it does it quickly. Sometimes it, all that stuff, all that educational information is available for you on our website if you wanna go take a look. So you can learn all about these things so you don't have to come back at me and say, you got it wrong. Nope, didn't get it wrong. It's just, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Uh, it did break out and it did come back and test it. <laughs> I mean, those are just facts. It's, it's not right or wrong. So we'll see what happens as far as whether or not Bitcoin runs up and hits the 100% extension or not. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that coming back to test that breakout point is not unusual. That it doesn't mean that that's a false breakout. Again, to reiterate, maybe it turns out to be a false breakout, but the fact that it tested the breakout point does not in itself mean it's a false breakout. So anyway, I just thought I would clarify that real quick because uh, a uh, number of people seemed uh, uh, anxious to point that out uh, because Bitcoin did uh, move back to the downside after the recording was made over the weekend. All right, so uh, taking a look at a case study consideration or actually a case study alert that we closed out. I wanted to show you this. This was a strangle that we did. You can see it was on SPCE. Now, this was also involved in that Alego, whatever, Alego, however you pronounce that, 
hedge fund that uh, that blew up, uh, that took down Viacom and a number of other stocks. SPCE was also involved in it when uh, when it blew up and they had to unwind the positions. Uh, we were fortunate enough to already be in the strangle when that happened. So we, we got the benefit of the downward move. So our entry was on April 9th. And you can see here is the triangle, really nice Ellie Wave triangle. So I, I used to, when I was doing live seminars, I would talk about triangles and news events. Earnings reports typically are really good, right, for moving stocks. We know early earnings reports move stocks, but you can't put one on right before the earnings report. I'm going to share with you about Netflix uh, here in a minute just to give you an idea of why we say that. Um, we'll talk about that just uh, as soon as I finish this. Um, but uh, when you have some sort of a news event like an earnings report, it tends to aid in the breakout. It's not a requirement, though. You don't have to have a news event. Well, in this case, it was the blow up of that hedge fund that caused it to move. But regardless, we already had a great pattern. And so what I was talking about before is that it just it's interesting at times when you have a great consolidation pattern and then an unexpected news event comes out and moves the stock. It's like, did the stock know something was coming? It's like, <gasps> you know, it is consolidating, waiting for the unexpected news, and then it comes and the stock breaks out. It's just interesting how things work. Love triangles, they're great patterns. So that was the setup, and then here was our exit. You can see just nine days later, and there was that move to the downside. You can see it move lower. Now, we look at the DMI a lot. But the CCI is our indicator that is our fast indicator because the DMI, even though both the directional indicators are pretty responsive from a day-to-day -day standpoint, the ADX is slower. It's a bit lagging. Talked about that as like turning a ship in the ocean, right? It takes a little longer to curl back to the upside or curl all the way down and do what it's going to do. But the CCI is ultra sensitive, right? It responds immediately. So the CCI came down here and you can see it had broken below its historical norms. And again, educational information that we have on our website, we've got uh, our trading series on all of the indicators that we utilize, trade scans. And so uh, you can see the uh, in individual indicators and understand the rules behind them. And with the CCI, one of the things that we look at is historics. It has the graph over the right-hand side it changes from stock to stock. So that's a generalized graph, but that 100, 200, 300, like 300 being overbought on this stock might not be that overbought on a different stock. So you look historically to see where have the extreme highs and extreme lows been for that particular stock with the CCI. And you use that as more of an indication than the actual scale over here on the right-hand side. And you can see that it had broken that. So it was a lot further down than normal. And we had a down day with a break back to the upside. So that was divergence, right? So the CCI was turning up while the stock was going down. Well, it turns out the stock went down again today. So we could have gotten a little bit more out of it. But um, you follow your indicators and generating a 30% gain in nine days, not such a bad deal. So that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you. And this is our... Um, trade page, by the way, which gives you an idea. If you've not seen our website before, again, ewotrader.com, we list all this information for you and the alerts are sent out. We send out the alerts to get in, send you a chart. What are we looking at? What's the actual trade that uh, we're uh, sending you to alert you on? Your choice, whether you follow it or not, we will alert you when we make an adjustment or when we exit as well. Your choice to follow along, but we alert you with everything that we're doing. And then in addition to that, we give you a daily update. This mark to market graph, which tells you every day what's going on with the stock, profit, loss, et cetera. So we are 100% transparent. I don't know that there's any alert service out there that is more transparent than we are, because I don't know how you could be. We show everything. Everything is there, nothing's hitting, there's nothing's phony, nothing is um, back, you know, back tested things. It's just, uh, uh, backdated is what I meant to say. Back test a lot, backdated. Uh, everything is 100%. Uh, and then we also post our actual fill prices. So this is where we know that our subscribers got filled on the position. So it's not made up alert prices going out either. So um, if you've considered um, 
uh, our alert service and haven't signed up yet, maybe you've been watching Trade Finder for a while, you know our record's been awfully good with Trade Finder. Now would be a great time, especially with that chart that I just showed you on the uh, margin to GDP, because uh, that, that's a bit ominous when you think uh, based on what happened back in 2000 and what happened in 2007. So if you don't have a plan for what to do if things start to go south, now we can help you because we're, we're ready. We are locked and loaded uh, to take advantage of the downside. If that happens, I've been priming our subscribers for weeks now saying that probably months, saying that one day we're actually going to have a down market. And when you have a down market, that is the most fun because you can make a lot of money in a very short period of time. We all know stocks go down faster than they go up. Um, but, you know, it, since the inception of uh, LA Wave options back at the end of 2017, the only down market we saw was one month <laughs> last March with the, uh, with the drop from the COVID thing. Other than that, it's been pretty much a bull market the entire time. So um, our subscribers really haven't gotten a sense. We had a couple of downside trades in that move. Uh, but they were short and sweet. I haven't seen a full-on bear market. Maybe we don't have one now either. Maybe this is just a potential correction building as well. But someday there'll be a bear market and man, you can make some money in a down market. And I always used, when I used to, I don't, I guess I don't anymore because I just went through it, but I used to feel a little odd about saying that because I know a lot of people have retirement accounts and IRAs, 401ks, longer term stuff. And they don't like to see significant downward moves. And so I am sensitive uh, to that as well. But from a trader standpoint, you'd much rather have a down market than an up market, especially when you're trading options. That's, that's just the truth. All right, so let's take a look at some of our previous case studies and uh, then we'll come back and uh, look and see if we can find a case study. Oh, Netflix, I wanted to tell you about Netflix because I also wanted to highlight something. So Netflix reported earnings after hours. Okay, so we are long Netflix. Full disclosure, again, we are 100% transparent. Well, Netflix went down after hours on earnings. They beat earnings by a dollar a share. So really good numbers, but the new subscriber additions was underwhelming. It was less than they were expecting. So Netflix used to get picked on because they were making all this money, but they were spending all this money. You know, it was kind of like the early days of Amazon. They're making all this money, but they're not making any money. They're spending it all and they're spending more than they're making, but the market's keeping them alive. And so they can do secondary offerings, et cetera, and, and come in and take advantage of the high stock price. Same thing was true with Netflix. They were doing the same thing, making tons of money, especially with their own content, just throwing all kinds of money at uh, creating different uh, shows and series, et cetera. Well, now they've done a good job, all right, managing because they made a dollar a share more than expected on lower subscribers than expected. So one could look at that and say, hey, they're getting their act together as far as managing the business side of Netflix. But it seems as though the market is choosing to look at the fact that the number of new subscribers was less than expected because the stock was down um, after hours after their report. So the stock was trading. Let's bring up Netflix because I do want to this is really important, and we'll be talking about this more Thursday night in our insiders meeting for those of you that are already alert subscribers. For those of you that aren't and don't know what I'm talking about, on Thursday night, we have a webinar similar to this, but for subscribers only, and it's interactive. You can ask questions literally by voice. So we go through every single open alert that we have, update on it, and then we go through and do Q&A. So we try to get uh, every subscriber's question answered every week uh, as best we can. So it's a very open forum. Um, so we'll talk about this uh, Thursday night. But so here's where we closed on Netflix. So call it, let's just round the numbers down. It's 549, but let's just round it to 500. The options had calculated a 6% move. So that was what was factored into the options price. How do we know that? Well, guess what? We've got a new educational web series coming out in mid-May uh, called Strangle Mastery. Now, the title might be slightly misleading, and you might be like, I already know about a strangle. You've taught us that before. You've taught us your triangles before. I know. This time, we're going to focus more on the options side of things, so it's going to be heavy on options analysis. We'll still cover the technical stuff, too, because that's what we do, but we're also going to delve into the options side of things because that is so important and you know, you really need to understand how options work uh, if you're going to trade options, at least understand how they're priced. So 
I will share with you. Now, how do you calculate? How do you know that there was 6% move priced into the option pricing? <clears throat> well, I, you know, that's what's priced in. And it's kind of like, you know, if you, if you bet on football games in Las Vegas, they have the line, right, on what teams favored by what. Uh, and it's amazing how accurate they are, but they're not always, right? Sometimes it's like, wow, they really nailed that one. And then other times it's not even close. Well, that's the same thing. When they're factoring in the percentage move, it's fairly accurate. It's something to pay attention to. So there's a 6% move factored in. So let's call that roughly a 30 point move is factored in. So if we were going to protect our call side, we have two ways to do it. We can buy a put and protect it that way. Or if it goes to the downside, we can add to the calls, right? And dollar cost average down. So those are the two things that you can do um, if you're going to hold through earnings, which I have no problem doing that. Um, so there's a roughly a 30 point move factored in. Well, Netflix actually, well, so what does that mean? Well, that means that if you buy an at the money call or put and Netflix stock moves 6% to the upside and you had a call, you don't make any money. You're going to roughly break even. If it moves 6% to the downside, your put wouldn't make any money. Break even. So the stock's going to have to move more than that 6% for the option to begin to make money. Then we get delta and because it's not one for one, right? Because you're not in the money. I'm talking about at the money options. Well, we trade out of the money. So we trade lower deltas. So the options that I was looking at had an 11 delta. That's, that's pretty low. So if you figure that there's a 6% move priced in, and the only way that you can make money then, um, whether you're buying at the money options or out of the money options, if the stock moves more than 8% or more than 6%, well, it did. It moved about 10%. So it moved about 4% more. But then once you figure out taking the delta, that's only 10, it would have amounted to about 20 cents in the puts. Maybe if the stock stays there at open tomorrow, which we don't know if it's going to do that at the open tomorrow. So it did outmove what was factored in. So there's a chance you could have made a couple dollars, but the, the first 30 points, that's already calculated. You're making no money on that move. You would only make money after that. And then you have to take the delta off of it. So you're only making 10 cents out of that last 20 points of the move. So again, maybe you make 20 cents, maybe. Um, if, if again, it, it holds and opens there. The other thing is look at where the support is. So we have support here at 500. And then you have massive support here at 480, which is actually the price that it touched right after the earnings were announced. It touched 480 on the low and it's back above 500 right now in after hours. So it came down and it touched that level, bounced back up, and now we're right here. So in essence, if we open at that 500 point or above, it's likely that even if we bought the out of the money puts, you wouldn't have made any money anyway. So what you can do is then dollar cost average on the calls. Why would you want to do that if they didn't add as many subscribers? Because they announced a big stock buyback program. So people have been waiting for that. They expected it. So it wasn't a surprise. It was expected, but nonetheless, they did announce it. So they can start buying back their own shares. You decrease the float. You run your business well. Over time, things should go to the upside. So that's the kind of stuff that we're going to talk about in that new master series, it's just coming out, um, call it roughly mid-May. We don't have an exact launch date yet, uh, but I wanted to give you that as an idea. And for our alert subscribers, all our education is 100% free. So anyway, um, something you might wanna consider because if you sign up for the master series, it costs you more than it would cost you to be a subscriber for the month. So you can sign up as a subscriber. We only charge month to month. We don't do uh, 12 months. There, there's no requirement in advance or anything. You can try this month to month. You try it for a month, you don't like it, you quit. And um, there's no auto charge or anything like that. Um, if you stop, you stop. So you, you've got nothing to lose. You get a month full of alerts and you get access to all the education. It's really a no brainer to be a subscriber, it really is. All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you regarding Netflix, because I'm sure there's going to be some questions on that uh, from our subscribers anyway. We'll go into more detail 
Thursday night. So let's catch up on our previous case study alert. So here we go, Royal Gold, finally moving. Gold's finally moving. I talked about that in the SPY update as well. So this is going back to March 9th uh, is when we looked at this. So let's go ahead and move to where we are now. Boom, there you go. We waited for it to break out and it took off. So we're up, uh, what, we're nearing 120 now. So, ah, you know, this comes to the point where you got to figure it out. If you're following along with these case study considerations, we don't send out entry and exit alerts on these. We just do this in Trade Finder and then it's up to you to figure out where to get out. So I don't know how far you want to let that run, um, but I'm going to go ahead and cross this one off as profitable. And again, if you've been watching our Trade Finders, I urge you to go back. We got we actually got a subscriber that emailed me and he said the reason he subscribed is he went back and he looked at the Trade Finder history. And he was so impressed with the results from the Trade Finder uh, case study considerations that he signed up. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Test it out. Uh, so we're going to say that that is enough of an upside breakout uh, in order to go ahead and call that one good and move on. Now, last week, we made a note that AOS had formed this really nice looking triangle. So we were long and we said, let's morph this into a strangle because of how nicely formed that triangle is. So that moved from being long to a strangle, which means you would have added an out of the money put and basically we're exactly where we were. So it looked like we were gonna try to break out to the upside, no follow through day and close today, just a hair below the point so we'll leave that one open. Nothing really has happened there. Next is DraftKings from 323. And I mentioned this one before. This one was one you could have considered closing last week. And we said, you know, we got March Madness is over. The Super Bowl is over. over. The big betting events are over. And it's playing out, isn't it? So, uh, you know, we're 15 points lower on a $70 stock. We usually look for a 10% move. That's almost 20%. So I'm going to call that one good too and say that one's closed with a profit as well. So we're whittling down uh, the case study considerations that we still had open. Uh, we also looked at Google at that same time frame and that broke out. Um, yeah, again, yeah, how, how long are you going to hold that? We closed out. We had an out of the money butterfly, uh, which did well. And we close that out today. Why did we close out the out of the money butterfly? I'll share that story more with you maybe next week and next week's trade finder because Google's got an earnings report coming on the horizon, which means they're going to hold that volatility in the options. One of the great things about an out of the money butterfly is that mid strike is sold twice. So as time decay goes by and you pull that time premium out, you make more and more money. So an out of the money butterfly is actually time decay positive as you approach expiration. And it was in May trade. So we're in the front month. All that was great, but there's an earnings report on the horizon. And we went through that once before where we had one that uh, was actually within the wings of the butterfly, it was profitable, everything was great. But because we're within the wings of the butterfly, you're waiting to see if it becomes one of those home run grand slam trades, the same thing. There's an earnings report coming and they held the vol. So you really can't make that much more um, out of it. So you either make the decision to hold that through uh, and being it was a 2,400, 25, 2,600 um, out of the money butterfly, we would have needed it to move higher. And so maybe it does. And it turns out that if it gets to 2,500 after earnings right near expiration, it would have been a grand slam. But what we may do uh, is put another out of the money butterfly on further out in time. So it doesn't, if it does pull back on earnings that we don't run out of time and, and lose the profit that was there. So we went ahead and took the profit uh, that we had, but I mean, this has made a massive move to the upside. So uh, I think we call that one good too. And you have to decide how much profit you're looking for, but that was a pretty big breakout moving from, it's, it's an almost, it's a 200 point move from 2060 to 2260. So um, you know, how much money do you want to want to make? And when does it start to get to the point of being greedy? All right. So then two weeks ago, we looked at SWK. So Stanley Black and Decker. So this was on the 6th of April. And 
a little bit higher. So moving in the right direction, hadn't done much last week, but starting uh, to move up a little bit, down day to day, looking at the 10 day moving average, like the market closed right on top of it. So nothing too concerning yet, but obviously we wanna keep an eye on the general market and see what's going on there for any upside trades. But for now, there's no reason to do anything with that. Uh, so Century Casinos, we looked at this and now this was morphed into a nice symmetrical triangle. So you would wanna make that one a strangle as well. And we should have talked about that last week. I don't know if we did or not, but I didn't write it down if we did. And you can see it looks like it's trying to sneak out to the downside. So you'd, you'd either close this one out or go ahead and, uh, and, and morph that into a triangle, which gives it the, or excuse me, a strangle, which allows you to make money if it breaks lower or stay in it if it breaks back to the upside, which was the original position. So that one's, that one's a, a little bit iffy um, as far as you wouldn't close out your long position, maybe not quite yet, till you got down here to the previous four, um, but adding on an out of the money put to capture any downside move from here would make sense. Got a little bit of a quasi doji there, so maybe it's kind of a head fake. We'll have to wait and see, but that one we'll keep an eye on because that, one, that one's a little precarious. And then uh, TWI uh, was from the 6th of April as well and kind of churning sideways. Hasn't really gone up, hasn't really gone down, just about exactly where it was two weeks ago. And take a look at the, the DMI, um, ADX is moving down. That's not what you want. It's not surprising considering the fact that the stock's moving sideways. Uh, the negative directional indicator is moving up, the positive is moving down. Um, this one, I, I would say that you might want to consider morphing that one into a strangle because there's a triangle pattern there as well, or just saying no harm, no foul, I'm out. Just take a little bit of tiny bit of time decay loss and, and move on. So one of those two scenarios, and I could still break to the upside here and move higher. So, I mean, it wouldn't be, a, Elliot says that's what's gonna happen because there's a triangle within a wave three. He says that's most likely to break to the upside. And maybe it does. Um, but we talked to our subscribers about uh, using a trader's approach uh, to a lot of things, Elliott Wave, especially the triangles. And even though it's a triangle with that wave three there, I still think you have to respect the downside. Um, stocks can break either direction coming out of the triangles. So um, I think it makes sense to, to protect that downside. So if you wanted to stay, I, that would be the thing. Hold the call, add an out of the money put, and see what happens uh, uh, from there. So then last week we looked at SKM and man, that was already a big move to the upside. And look at this, just continued. We even just continued up, it kept going. So, so far so good on that one. So we're up, let's see, we were at 29, a little doji today though. Um, let's look at the, 10 day moving average. Yeah, there you go. So some separation here. There was last week as well, but we continue to move higher. But separation with the 10 day moving average with that doji today, we might get a bit of a pullback. So if you had the opportunity to take a quick short gain, uh, you might consider doing that. Uh, see what happens at the open because right, it's an ADR. So it trades overseas. Uh, it could open lower. If it doesn't, um, you know, you could consider either holding it and adding to it or just taking the gain off real quick. But at some point, that overbought condition is going to get rectified. So we're going to come back here and, and close that gap with the 10-day moving average. So then looking at uh, SAP was the other one that we looked at last week. And from here, another one moved to the upside. So last week, we were at 134, we're at one, so five points to the upside since last week. So that one's doing really well. So um, we'll keep that one open. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that we make at CNTY a strangle because that was a pretty good looking triangle. So we'll stay in that one. Um, 
but we only have a few left now of um, case study considerations. We did have a few on the watch list. Let's look at those real quick. Uh, last week we looked at ULTA. And obviously we're not gonna get what we were looking for there. We were watching for the ADX uh, to move to the upside. And with that move lower, boy, it came awfully close to filling that gap, didn't it? So it made a nice upward move. Almost filled it, lows 341.29, high 340, so missed it by a dollar on a $300 stock of filling the gap. So it got awfully close. So we'll let that one go. Uh, Adobe, we were looking for a move back down to the 10 uh, day moving average, just going ahead with my notes. And I think we may have got that today. Yep, there we go. So we're back touching the 10 day moving average. So again, I think following along with what happens in the market is important there. Well, interestingly enough, the uh, founder of Adobe passed away today. So uh, just a little bit of news on Adobe, but uh, we'll see if it holds this 10 day moving average and continues back to the upside or, or that's the end of it. And then uh, Dollar General, we were looking at, and I wrote if it moved above 220. So let's see. Yeah, because of that resistance. So I think that still holds. 10 day moving average is there's still some separation there, still catching up. Um, but there's just going to be too much resistance there, 220. So I think that piece is still the same. So we'll keep that on the watch list here and say that uh, we just um, wait, see if it gives us that break of uh, 220 to consider anything. Let's look at the DMI and see what it, that looks pretty good. The DMI looks like it wants to break it. So now that's different, isn't it? From what we were talking about with uh, uh, examples where the negative directional indicator was moving up here is moving down. So you have the positive directional indicator moving up, negative directional indicator moving down. The longs or the bulls are fully in control of this stock right now. The shorts are gonna to try to make a stand there at 220. So we wanna see if it can break that and allowing that 10 day moving average to catch up um, would be helpful in that regard. So maybe, um, maybe we build enough momentum to break above that. Let's well, so wait and see what happens um, between now and next week. Maybe next week we have a resolution to that. All right, so let's take a look at our pre-computed scans and see if we can find the case study consideration for this week. Now, isn't that interesting? The momentum scan, which <laughs> I'm going to show you for those of you that may be brand new. Um, this is one that was identified back on the 30th of March, we already closed it out on BAK. Look at that move. So here's the 30th of March right there. That's when we put this one as a case study consideration from the momentum scan and look at that move. So that's the potential that can occur. We've had some that haven't worked out that well, but there's the potential of what can happen from that uh, scan, but there's zero results. I think that's telling. Um, there's no lower dollar stocks. That's what the momentum search does, uh, is it identifies lower dollar stocks that you know may be moving up, may have a momentum phase, maybe trying to attract institutional money. Um, there aren't any of those. Uh, so that was kind of a, uh, a quasi play on the whole Reddit Robinhood thing, but they're just trying to short squeeze. Um, we're looking for setups, lower dollar stocks that can run like that one, but are backed by fundamentals and technicals. So um, nothing there. So when we look at the bullish impulse stocks, which is my search, you can see where it says Elliott Wave Options here. So if you are new, this is a program called Profit Source. And if you're an Elliott Wave subscriber and you get Profit Source as well, 
the folks at uh, Hub, you can actually find out more about this software at ProfitSource.com. Exactly how it sounds, the word ProfitSource.com, manufactured by people called the Hub Corporation. They just nicely included for our LA Wave Options subscribers, all of these searches that are under LA Wave Options. So people that aren't LA Wave Options subscribers that have Profit Source don't get those. Only LA Wave Options subscribers do. And the ones that say EWO, those are my search parameters that they've incorporated in. So you can follow along and basically on a daily basis, you can see what I'm looking at. What I do every day when I run through and look at search results and you can email support 24 hours a day. You can email me. Um, I'm up late a lot, as you know, from the uh, recordings, but I'm probably not going to answer you at four in the morning, um, but I've done it before. But uh, I get back to you usually within 24 hours. Uh, and so um, we uh, uh, you can ask, hey, that was on the search, but you didn't. You didn't post it. Why not? So it becomes a learning tool to have these searches available. And we have a number of subscribers that are taking the educational content. They're taking the indicators and they're running with it and they're identifying their own opportunities and are, are sending me trades and say, look what we did. And so they're having great success uh, from the educational information. So we love hearing that stuff. It's a big part of what we do. We are not just an alert service. That's not what we're about. Uh, we pride ourselves on our educational content. All right, so let's take a look at this bullish impulse. And you could say, well, wouldn't it make more sense to look at consolidating stocks? Yeah, I think so. But let's just do a quick combination. So you can see I X'd both those boxes. So bullish impulse and bullish wave three. So by the way, look up here under LA wave, everybody gets this, but you can see that they've added these things um, for when stocks get labeled the very first day they get labeled with a wave three. How cool is that? Because everybody knows with an LA wave, wave three is the strongest wave. Often the longest, not always, often, but um, it's always the strongest. Holy cow, they, SKM is still on there. So we already know about that. We identified it last week. And then PSA, we closed this one out a while and it's continued to go. Holy smokes, look at that. We closed that out back on 3, 316, we identified it. And I think we closed it out the next week, but it's continued to run. And it's still on the search, which is really interesting. It just showed up again on the search. I don't know where the, well, there it is. But it is starting to get a bit overbought with the ADX moving above 40 and being slightly outside the positive directional indicator. So I think that's telling you that the strongest part of that run is over. Uh, clearly, we could have stayed longer. But again, at some point, when you're getting greedy, you have a nice profit. You don't second guess. You take it and you go. But it's just interesting that, that it came back on the search, re-showed up again, and uh, SKM still being on there uh, from last week. So let's let's take the impulse off and let's see if we can find anything that's consolidating within the wave three. And there are a few. So let's see if we can't find oh, MTH, Meritage. We can't find something that looks good. Oh man, you can see the low ADX. So Clearly, the stock was looking to break out. The question becomes, have we missed it? Because there was the triangle, right? There. And it broke out. No follow-through day. So we had the breakout day on the 16th, came back down on the 19th. So no follow-through. And now we're back exactly what Bitcoin did, coming back down and testing the breakout point. It makes you wonder, um, what happened with the pricing of the options with that. But I've traded, you know, we talk about this uh, a lot too, is that you find um, certain symbols that show up a lot. And I've traded this one in the past as well. It just tends to move. You can see by the size of those bars that it can be volatile. Um, let's see what the other ones look like, or we may come back and take a look at, at that one. VOE, 
United Rental, another possibility. Yeah, looks like looks like we're a day behind, doesn't it? I mean, it looks like a lot of breakers. That would have been really nice yesterday. That's a big move today, though. 14 points, over 4%. So that's too late. So we can't do anything with that now. But had we had this last night, um, that would have looked awfully good for today. Well, I'll let that one go. It's too much. TMHC. Uh, really familiar with that one. Um, kind of the same thing. Uh, it's another home builder. So interesting that we have Meritage and uh, Taylor Morrison. So two within the home builder sector on the search. It would have been good yesterday as well. Um, so we can kind of keep an eye on these and see if they come back. But it's starting to look like with today's move in the market, uh, it might have been an, enough to forego uh, putting on strangles here. So um, darling ingredients, no idea what that is. But so this is that gurgling that we've talked about. Um, I use this, I use a lot of analogies, but one of the analogies is when you have low ADX and the ADX starts up before there's a big breakout, it's like a volcano where you look at the top of the volcano and it's quiet, you don't see anything going on, but then underneath it, you see the rumbling, right? The bubbling, or, or you don't see it, but it's going on and it's getting ready to getting ready to blow. This one isn't quite as bad because, well, it's more of a breakout than I thought. I didn't think the breakout was quite as much, but then when you draw the triangle, um, we had um, down 5% today. So that's, that's a pretty decent move, 360. So I don't know if, if any of these are, Worthwhile doing. Go back to Meritage. That one we could certainly make an argument for, couldn't we? Because we could say, well, it broke out, but it's it's back to where it was. So really, it's destroyed the formation of the triangle, but yet it's back at the breakout point. So my pause there was I was looking to see how much it's moved lately, and I'm seeing a bit of sideways movement here, which concerns me as far as the breakout. Um, really sideways stuff here. It did work its way lower, but not a whole lot of volatility going on there. So um, yeah, I don't think we want, we don't want this to go back in. Let's just look at consolidating stocks. Uh, we'll pick a couple here and then I'll go to questions, see if we can't find something to make our case study consideration for this week. Um, well, we already have AOS and that one looks pretty good. Discover financial, that's interesting that there's a financial in triangle. That's curious, let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah, same scenario, right? It seems like we're seeing a lot of those that uh, we needed to have this, this one yesterday. Cree. And there was a lot of movement today. Look how good that was yesterday. Look at that. Hmm. That one still looks pretty good. Let's see what the options look like there. So a lot of times when I look away, I look at a different computer, um, people always wonder, what are you doing? And I'm looking at the options. 
but you can look at them here through profit source as well. And just, I click there for options. And so we can come up here and let's put in uh, Cree. Give it a second and there you can see there comes the options so there's the months that are available and i know that printing is small um so if you if you need to uh, you can use a magnifying tool which allows you to blow it up we'll move it over here so you can see there it allows you to see it in a larger scale so on the call side, we would, um, so those are weeklies. You can change that. You can filter it and take the weeklies out, which we do by switching that to uh, two months or more. So that gets rid of the weeklies because you're not really gonna look at a weekly for a strangle, right? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to do. So um, you can take those out and then that gives you fewer choices you can see this only has the evens, 50, 55, 60, the two and a half strikes aren't there. So let's scroll this down a bit. And September would be good. So where are we? Let's see. So there you can see the deltas. Here, if you're wondering what I did, you can preset your searches. So I took the IV off. Um, we'll look at that more when we get into the Strangle Mastery class. But you can see there I have Delta on there. So we can look at the September month and now the Delta column. And there's a 28, it's expensive though. See the bid's 440, the ask is 530 on that 130 strike. See that 130 strike in the middle there? Um, go down to a 24 delta, you're still 330 by 430. So they're a little expensive. So this is what I'm looking at when you're saying, when I'm saying, oh, the options are expensive, but their spreads are wide. Uh, now you get an idea of what I've been looking at. And so you can see that on the 135 strike there, 330 bid, 430 ask, it's a dollar wide. So if we're going to do a strangle, that means the puts are probably going to be the same, All right? So if we looked at a September, um, yeah, the September, well, we can go down to <coughs> 20 Delta. We don't really want to go lower than that though. So the 140 call, and then let's just see what the, then I'll show you something really cool if the 140, if the uh, there's a 20 delta put that matches up. Uh, it's a bit expensive. So over on the. Well, let's go over here on the put side. So you can see the negative number. Whoops, <laughs> let me move that screen out the way. So if we scroll down, there's a negative 22 delta, 460 by 570. Um, Gosh, they're just a bit expensive, right? That would have to go into our high value portfolio. We actually have a high value side of 
are both impulse and volatility strategies because in general terms in our impulse, which is directional trading and our volatility, which is strangles, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, we try to keep the risk at $500 or less per alert. Uh, and so then we have high value, which for people that have larger accounts that don't mind putting on larger positions, um, we do that as well. So we could put on a position that costs more than $500. So you can see the negative 22 Delta there, it's negative because it's a put, um, is 460 by 570. So we're still talking about six or seven dollars there. Um, but so looking at it again, it was the September 85 strike. So we looked at the September 140. So you can come over here, you click on it, you just hit the plus sign. And down here, it starts to, when there's strategy summary down at the bottom there, it incorporates your strategy. So then we come over here and we look at the 85 put and you do plus. And now it's populated the trade and you can see here, um, I'll just go ahead and magnify this again so you can see it. It's populated the trade for you and you can see how much it costs. So right there, you can see a $9.10 debit. So 570 on the put side, 340 on the call side. You can see the volatilities are pretty similar, uh, but that's $9.10. So that's outside of our normal risk management, um, but it would be within you know, the high value portfolio if you were interested in doing that. And then you can come over here and you can click on the graphs and it gives you the risk graph. So here you can see there's the graph of the stock. And then right beside it, there is the risk graph. And you can see that you would make money slightly faster. And you can move this around too, by the way. You can find out how much money you would make out of the position just by clicking around on different prices because there's a price graph at the bottom. So you can say, okay, if I move to there, how much do I make? But you can see clearly that based on the risk graph being just a little bit uh, unusual and not quite perfectly symmetrical that you would make money slightly faster to the downside uh, than you would to the upside. And I think that's a little bit more than just the, the $2 or the two point difference in the deltas. Um, that looks a little, little more offset than what being just a minus two delta would do. So has to be some IV factored in there as well. But anyway, I wanted to show you that because it's pretty cool. So you don't have to leave here and go to your broker to look at options. You can create everything right here. So let's go ahead and do that one. Let's make Cree our, uh, our example for this week, even though it's had a one day breakout. Um, if you're wondering, well, why did you go to the 22 Delta? Why didn't you go to the, was it 18 was lower? Because it's already moved to the downside, right? So we kind of want to incorporate that in, in case you were to get a follow through day tomorrow. So your Delta is slightly higher on the put side than the call. That's prudent, isn't it? I mean, you don't want to just ignore the fact that it's had a downside breakout today. So we're off, we're, we're accounting for that, if you will, because the Delta on our call is just a little lower than the Delta on our put. So um, we're going to make that note for 420 Cree. Also making a note that that's a little more expensive than what we normally do, but you know, we're running out of time here. I wanted to get to a few questions. And so we wanted to make sure that we uh, um, had something as far as a case study consideration for the week. I don't think we've ever had a week where we, where we didn't have one. I know there was an, one other week where we struggled to find something, but I think that also tells you that we're in a bit of transition. All right, so real quickly, we'll take a few of your questions. So GTFC, um, M has been waiting patiently there to take a look at these. TTFC, TTCF, sorry. That's why that one wasn't working. Tattooed chef. I guess, are people thinking that people aren't gonna stay home and cook anymore? <laughs> um, 
because of the economy reopening, certainly made a uh, pretty significant move to the downside. Would have been a great descending triangle at the end of last week for the beginning of this week. I don't know, was there news? I don't really follow this stock. So, um, but that's a pretty significant two day break. Now, if you were along it and were concerned about it, um, you're nearing some support here. So hopefully it holds at 15 if you were long and you can get a bounce from there. If it breaks that though, there's a little bit of support there at 14, but man, it could be coming all the way back down to 10 if it can't hold in this area. So I think the longs are gonna to try to make a stand there at 15. I'd be surprised if it dropped through there very easily, maybe enough to give you a chance to get out if you were long or if you're waiting to go short, then if it breaks 15, then there's your entry with a potential target down to, to 10. So Zoom, looking like an awfully good, I must not have gone far enough down our list because that one should have shown up. Um, that would be an expensive one as well, being $300, but it's a pretty nice looking triangle on Zoom as far as a uh, potential move uh, up or down from here, kind of dead on its 10 day moving average. That looks like it wants to break out. Uh, Jane asks, what do you do when stock passes your strike price and you get a sign? Well, if you're long the stock, you can't get assigned. So if you're long, like you bought a call or you bought a put, you're in control. You're the one that does the exercise. So you can't get assigned. You can only choose to exercise your right. Like if you buy a call, you have the right to buy the stock. If the option or if the stock moves way past your option and your, your call is way in the money now and it would behoove you like, OK, let's say you bought a hundred strike call and the stock's now at 150 and you have the right to buy it at 100. You can do that if you want. If that's a stock you want to own, you can call the broker and exercise your option and buy the stock at 100 that's worth 150. Now, understand your call has gone up in value in the meantime. So you could just sell the call and take the profit. But if it's a stock you wanted to own and you wanted to get in at a lower price, if you're long options, you make that decision. If you buy a put, then you have the right to sell the stock at the strike price. Um, the only time you can get exercise is if you're short. If you've sold an option, somebody else exercises you. And even if it goes in the money, unless it goes way in the money, they're probably not gonna do that till expiration because if they exercise you early, you just say, well, thank you, um, because they just gave you the time premium. They forfeit the time premium. If you know if there's a month to go and they exercise it, well, they just gave you that month of time premium. You get to keep it. So um, I, don't, I don't know whether you were long or short, but that's the issue there. Uh, we'll look at GLG. Uh, we had a nice move at a Royal Gold. down at 125. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know enough about this to, to really make a call. It's trying to find support there. It's, uh, it's in danger of moving back to the pink sheets if it's not on there now. Uh, utilities? Here's the XLU, which is the utility sector. And um, as Alexander asked that. And another one that is uh, looking pretty good right now is healthcare. XLV also is a good looking chart. So um, it does look like these defensive sectors are finding bids. The issue I would see here is that is a pretty decent zigzag pattern that blew right through the 100% extension and the ADX is really long. So it's been, it's had a heck of a move, but it, it just looks like the strongest part of the move is over and it might want to come back down and test that 100% extension at 
at some point in time. So uh, SWK, we already looked at. PLTR. Um, important day today. You can see the support right here. Um, so what are we at? 21 and change is under 22. Um, but we do have a symmetrical triangle there. Um, my podcast, it looks like it wants to break out. Um, ADX didn't make it low enough to show up on our search, but if you're long, it's got a hold right there. When you're at major support, it needs a hold there. And we still have a gap up here. So I'll take two more, Centino, JYNT and FNKO, and then we'll have to wrap it up. But uh, we'll talk about some good stuff tonight, I think. I know we didn't get to as many of these symbols as you would like, but um, hopefully you found this formative. Uh, nice little triangle there. Small one, but Elliot says, pay attention to those too. So here's our triangle. I don't think you could call today a breakout because it just looks like it still fits in there. So this one looks like, wow, oh the ADX is way high. So it could consolidate, it could do one of these numbers. Here's what makes me nervous about when you do a strangle when, it, when it's uh, ADX is that high. You could have one of these consolidations. That's the that's the definition of the launch pad effect right there. For those of you that are subscribing, you know what I'm talking about. Um, just dead sideways and then then the blast off. But with the ADX that high in a triangle, you could kind of morph into one of those. So last one, FNKO. I'll go. <laughs> just like the symbol says. See, I mean, one of the things that we've noticed, it's been the theme of the evening, hasn't it? That there have been a lot of consolidation patterns that have broken the down, another one with a huge ADX. So none of these are going to show up on my search because the ADX is too high. And it just, it creates the, sometimes you can have triangles with big ADHs and they take off and run and they work perfectly well. But other times, because the ADX is high, they go sideways, which is the one thing we don't want. So when you have a triangle with a low ADX, usually telling you that the consolidation pattern has pretty much come to an end and the stock is getting ready to break out. But when the ADX is still high, it could move into further consolidation that normally doesn't happen when you have a triangle with a low ADX. Sometimes, but very rarely does that happen. So another one where it looks like a lot of these triangles um, I had a downside breakout today, which means tomorrow's important, right? Because you have to have a second day, follow through a confirmation day. One day doesn't mean anything. They could all be head fakes. I mean, the market could explode to the upside tomorrow and all this changes. But I think we've seen enough to know that we need to be prudent right here. Thanks for your attention. As always, appreciate your time. Look forward to talking to you again next week. Take care, everybody.